In this video, we will go over your eBay Marketplace settings. This is where all of the repricing magic happens. When logged into SKUgrid, please navigate to Settings. Click on Marketplaces. Click on eBay. Click on the US or UK button depending on the platform you are selling on. The first thing you will need to do on this screen is get your eBay keys. Click the link that says get your keys here. You will receive a prompt that says you are being redirected. All unsaved settings will be lost. Click OK. Click the link to be redirected to eBay for authentication. You will be prompted to log into eBay. Log in using your eBay username and password. Read over the terms and click agree to authorize the application. It will then tell you that you can close the eBay tab. Close it. You'll be back on the SKU Grid tab. Click the link that says done. Check your settings. That will put you back at your general settings. Click on the marketplaces tab again. Click on eBay. Click on US or UK. Your eBay keys should now be filled in and you can continue with the rest of the setup. The next setting will be your default quantity. Enter a numeric value here. This will be the default quantity for all of your eBay listings. At this time, you cannot have a different quantity per item unless the item is paused. SKUgrid will continue to change your items to the default quantity. The next option is update sold items to default quantity. Choose yes or no here. SKUgrid is checking for your eBay sales approximately every 30 minutes. If it notices that your stock changed from the default because of a sale and your supplier is still in stock, SKUgrid will bring your listing back up to the default quantity you have in your settings. This allows you to keep your item alive longer and build a stronger selling history. Choose yes to allow this function or no to disable it. No, adjusting your item at a sale does use another credit at that time. The next two options are your repricing thresholds. Reprice only if price increase by at least X amount of dollars. This setting keeps SKU Grid from changing your price until the supplier price increases by the amount you set here. For example, if you want SKU Grid to increase your price, if the supplier price changes by one dollar or one pound if in the UK, then enter one here. Enter a number here that fits your business model. Reprice only if price decreased by at least X amount of dollars. This setting keeps SKU Grid from changing your price downwards until the supplier price decreases by the amount you set here. For example, if you want SKU Grid to decrease your price only if the supplier decreases by $5 or more, then enter a 5 here. So if the supplier price drops by $4.99, SKU Grid will not decrease your price. But if it decreased by $5 or more, then it would in this example. Enter a number here that fits your business model. If you do not want SKU Grid to ever decrease your prices based on supplier changes, enter five nines here. The next setting deals with rounding your amounts. Some people prefer to have their listing amounts end in 99 cents or 97 cents, for example. If you want SKU Grid to round your numbers, you can select any number here or choose do not round up if you do not want SKU Grid to round your listing amounts. This next setting is more for people who list 30 day listings versus good till cancel. Do not end out of stock lots, but set price to is a function in which SKU Grid can change the price of your listing to a set amount if the supplier goes out of stock instead of ending the item. So to use this function, you would enter a high price that would discourage buyers from buying the item if it goes out of stock. For example, you could enter 9,999 here. If the item goes out of stock, your selling price would be changed to 9,999 instead of ending. If you do not want to use this function, then set this option to zero. If you list 30 day listings, your listings will end when out of stock. If listing with good till canceled listings, 
your listings would be changed to a quantity of zero, assuming you have the out of stock option set in your eBay account. Good till cancel will be discussed more in depth in another video. A few notes about this function. Please see the disclaimer. Using this option will cause you to use up your listing limits pretty quickly. So if your limits are low, you might not want to do this. If your limits become exhausted and there is no more room in your limits to make further changes to your other items, eBay will prevent SKUGrid from setting your out of stock items to this amount. Also, you may get messages from buyers thinking you are insane for asking for $9,999 for a $20 item. Users who list good till canceled do not need to worry about this setting at all as their items would be getting set to a quantity of zero instead of ending. Next is auto update eBay stock. Select yes if you want SKU Grid to be able to control your items inventory. Select no if you do not wish to use this function. Auto relist days in lots. This setting applies to users who list 30 day listings. If you set this option to yes, then SKU Grid will have the ability to relist your 30 day listings that have ended due to out of stock or your listing ending on eBay after they have expired. If SKU Grid relists the item, then it will automatically update the reprice SKU in SKU Grid so that it is tracking the right listing going forward. If you set this option to no, SKU Grid will not relist your items. You will maintain control over that but please note, if you relist items, you need to edit the existing entry in SKU Grid and change the eBay item ID to the new one that is generated by eBay once you manually relist. Users who list good till canceled do not need to worry about this option. They can leave it set to no. Good till canceled listings do not end until you end them intentionally. They just renew every 30 days until you cancel them. Finally, auto update eBay price. Set this option to yes if you want SKU Grid to be able to change your prices. Set this option to no if you do not want SKU Grid to be able to change your prices. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and click save settings. We will discuss setting up your default formula and additional formula settings in another video. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.